Hey guys, what's going on? Tom here with another tutorial type thing and in this one I'm going to teach you guys how to 3D motion track. Now this is probably my favorite effect utility type thing to do. Basically what it is, uh, without getting too complicated, is you take your footage, uh, you do some stuff to it and then you basically get a 3D camera that follows your actual camera movements. Now, why is this useful? It's useful because you can align stuff to your scene. So you can put 3D objects in your scene. So you can put like, you can put a robot coming out of the ground. You can have like 3D objects interacting with like actual people, like you uh, shaking the hand of like a 3D model of Obama or something. I don't know, I, I, I'm just gonna show you how to like put a cube in the scene, a 3D cube. And basically you can do whatever you want. I mean, there's no re real limitations. So I, I guess we can just start now. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, footage, uh, make a composition, and this is my footage. It's me just kind of going around this uh, patio type area. And you see there's a lot of like camera shake and that's intentional. Um, obviously the less camera shake you have the easier it is to track but I just want to show you guys um, how effective this technique is. So bam. Now, a few things you want to keep in mind while you're filming. I just want to go over this so you have an easier time tracking. Have good lighting so it's easier to see um, spots on your footage. So, good lighting, a very high shutter speed. So, like, 1 over, like, 125, 1 over 160. Um, so, you have more frozen frames, less motion blur. And, um, if you can, take your ISO as low as you can. Um, it's not really going to be that big of a deal, but you know, if you have ISO like 100, you're golden. I think I'm running um, 1 over 160 and ISO 200 um, in this footage. So the lower you can go, the better. Okay, so once you have your footage in, uh, you really don't have to do much with After Effects. All you have to do is go to Composition, Pre-Render. And then just uh, save it as a JPEG sequence. Now... The reason I'm doing a JPEG sequence is uh, Buju, which is what we're using to track, um, uses uh, image sequences, not video to track. So you have to export it into a JPEG sequence. I guess you can also do like a PNG, but you know, JPEG's fine, uh, max quality. And then just export that to wherever you want. But I'm not going to do that because I actually already exported it. So once you're done with that and you have your whole sequence exported, um, open up Buju. And this is what Buju looks like. Um, it does look kind of intimidating, but you know it's actually probably one of the simplest programs um, I've introduced you guys to. Probably simpler than After Effects. So what you want to do is go to Import Sequence, go to Browse Network, and then just go to the directory where you saved your uh, sequence. Uh, for me, I think I called it Test Sequence. And then select the first image in your sequence. So it'll be whatever the name is underscore zero 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 make sure you select the first one and then click open so now we're almost done but we need to specify a few more things first we need to say the move type so it's either a free move or a nodal pan um, a free move is when you just take your camera and kind of like go willy nilly just pretty much what I did and that's why we're selecting free move a nodal pan is when you're using a tripod and you're just kind of like tilting the camera without actually moving it. Um, generally, a free move is easier to track, and that's what we have. Uh, make sure your frames are set. So if mine's like 128 frames, we're going to start from frame 0. And then make sure your frame rate is whatever it is. Mine was like 29.97, and then click Apply. Okay, make sure everything's good, and then click Close. So you see now we have our um, footage imported. Make sure that works out well. You can just scrub through here. And then what you want to do is start tracking. So to do that, click Track Features. Uh, go to Advanced. And you see we got all these uh, points over here. Um, can I enlarge in this? No. Um, so we have all these points here that kind of signify where it's going to track. Uh, you can increase the sensitivity, uh, which will give you more points. But it will also give you some inaccurate points. You want to keep it about 60% uh, to 50%. Uh, sensitivity uh, my feature skill is gonna be normal I think that's I think that's about good so then click start tracking and then you you see we get all these like um, red red plus signs with yellow trails now what these are 
Um, these are track points, and the yellow trails uh, signify where they're moving uh, between each frame. You see they're all moving to one side. That's because the camera's tilting to one side. And what it's going to do is it's going to use all these points to kind of calculate or average out a 3D camera. And obviously a point that's closer to the camera is going to move more than a or less than a point that's uh, further away because of uh, parallax and uh, stuff like that. So um, depending on how long your shot is, it shouldn't take that long. Just make sure at all times you have at least 50 track points. If you don't, you may need to reshoot with a higher um, with a higher shutter speed and a lower ISO. I mean, or just get like a better scene. Some areas are pretty hard to track. Okay, so we should be done now. Um, then you can just scrub through here. You see we have like a mess of points, and the more points you have, generally, the better you are. That's not always true, but make sure the points, the trails kind of accurately show your camera movement. Okay, so the next step is actually solving your camera, because right now we just have points, but we don't know really what they mean. So uh, go to camera solve. Um, make sure you select all frames if you want all your frames. Uh, sequence 1. And then you can actually optimize camera path smoothness, which means um, usually when it tracks, it's going to be very jagged because you vibrate with your hands. The camera is actually moving a lot. But if you click this, um, it's going to smoothen it out and give you a better track. So I would recommend enabling this and then click start. Now, it shouldn't take that long, depending on how fast your computer is. I think we're about done uh, 86%. You see, we actually have a... Uh, progress meter okay so we're done tracking and you see we now have these uh, blue and uh, yellow dots now what's really cool is if I click play they actually stick on to my footage pretty well actually a good a good place to look is right here on this uh, box thing um, they're actually tracking on very very well now what the uh, yellow dots mean is there are uh, track points that you can see at the time that are active and uh, blue points are inactive, but you see, as you play, uh, some blue points become yellow because, you know, they're activating. So, pretty pretty much, just we have a pretty good track, but you do see, like, a few points here um, aren't really following the grass. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have to adjust our track. So, go to 3D Tasks, uh, go to Solve Tools, go to Filter Structure. And this is going to delete all the bad points. So, I only want to keep... 50% of my points and you see deleted some of the really bad points and then whenever you make a change you just want to adjust your uh, camera uh, so go to solve adjust um, then just enable smoothing so you get a smooth track and let that just calculate okay and there you go, we now have a adjusted solve, so some of the points have been moved, and if we cl click play, we have a rather smooth uh, track. Not bad. You see at the end here, um, the whole thing kind of tilts over. Um, that That's because at this point we only have like four points tracked on, but that's not a big deal. Um, there are ways to uh, fix that, but of course, this is just a tutorial. Um, if you want to fix that, just continue adjusting your solve and um, also improving the quality of your footage. I mean, I could I could definitely uh, fix this, but it's really not worth the time. You know what we could do? We could undo the uh, adjust, and you see now the points are kind of kind of better. I mean, an adjust kind of screws it up sometimes, but you see now we our whole footage sticks on really well, so... There you go, we have a, a camera solve. Now, you guys are like, yeah, we got a camera solve, but we don't have 3D objects in. That's because we need to uh, specify our geometry. So what you want to do is go to scene geometry, and then what we're going to do is pretty much specify some like dimensions, some points. So just click any point you want, just uh, left click, and then click add coordinate. And this is going to be our origin, so connect, update. And if I enable my ground plane, you see we actually have a plane now, a plane, and it's not really following our ground, it's just following the uh, origin point. So what we got to do is uh, define some dimensions. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select two points, and you see these are kind of like in a line right here in the uh, Z axis, like the depth 
axis. So uh, select those two, add coordinate, um, and then say that is the Z axis, and then update. And you see our ground plane updated again. Obviously, it's still not right, so we're going to add a point here and a point here. And you see it kind of makes like a cross, and this is going to be our uh, X axis. So X is left to right, uh, Y is up to down, and Z is forwards to backwards. Um, so what we're going to do is add those two points, and that is going to be our X axis. And you see now our uh, ground plane is actually tracking on quite well. Just play through that and make sure, I mean, it's not going to be perfect. You could always adjust your solve. You could always uh, adjust your composite. I mean, I guess we could also add a y-axis, but it's not really necessary because uh, all, re all we're really doing is tracking the uh, ground plane. So I I'm saying that looks pretty good. Of course, um, if you were actually doing this for like a production or your own project, you should probably spend a bit more time on it. So now let's actually add a 3D object. So go to add test objects, and by default, it's going to add the Buju uh, Ladybug. And you see if we click play now, it's actually sticking on really, really well. Of course, until the ending where I kind of like lopside the camera. A smoother camera, guys, it's, it's really going to help. So, I mean, unless you really want shaky footage, uh, District 9 style, I mean, there you go. We have our uh, test object. I mean, we could always add more test objects. Like, uh, let's say I wanted a, let's say I wanted a pyramid. Apply. You see now we we see the corner of the pyramid to actually get it to move. Uh, what we need to do is go into the 3D view. Just click 3D, and you see we actually have a 3D model now, and you you can actually see our camera move now, which is actually. Really cool. So this is what a Buju sees in our geometry. You see this uh, cluster of points over here is actually that a uh, box thing from before. So that's pretty cool. Um, how do we zoom in? Uh, there you go. Just hold shift to do all this. So select your pyramid, then go to um, move. And you can actually move this in a 3D space. So if you go back to your 2D, you see now the pyramid's kind of back there. And if we point, the pyramid's actually sticking on as well. And you can put it anywhere you want. You can put it on that box thing, like that cylinder box thing. It doesn't really matter. So there you go, guys. That's how you uh, camera solve. Hopefully this um, helped you guys out with your projects. If you enjoyed, uh, good for you. Congratulations, high five. Um, probably in the next tutorial, I'll teach you how to bring it into a 3D program where you can actually animate stuff and do more than just like putting a cube in there. Uh, you can have stuff blow up in 3D. You can uh, animate fluid or liquid. It, do it doesn't really matter. But you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. With this, So make sure you nail this down. This is a really hard concept to uh, understand. But once you do, uh, it's, it's very useful. It's used in a lot of movies. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.